And Lord, I, I just thank you, Lord, for all of what you've done, all of what you're doing. And Lord, can I please bring your word? I pray, Lord, that you will anoint my lips, my mind, my heart. Let me not speak from self, but let me speak from you. I pray your Holy Spirit will guide mm, every word that would pass from my lips and pass into the ears, into the hearts and minds of those listening. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I, I'm going to tell you, I just, I'm just fired up today. I feel good today. I'm thankful today. And I recognize and realize I'm only feeling this good because I'm in his presence. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. And I know and I realize that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I got a testimony, just like you have a testimony. But I added to my testimony a song because God has been good. And I just want to just let him know how much I love him on this morning. I, I want to let him know how much I thank him and appreciate all of what he's done, all of what he's doing, and is continuing to do in my life. And saints, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to give you the theme right, off, right, right from Jump Street. The theme from Jump Street is not too late. It's not too late. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what storm you might be in. I don't know what storm you may have come out of. But I'm here to tell you it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late to see that change. It's not too late. To, uh, let's just say to experience uh, uh, that breakthrough. It's not too late to get that healing. It's not too late to, to get that job. It's not too late to be reconciled to a loved one. It's not too late to find your place in the church. It's not too late. My God, my God. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I mean, all of us should be rejoicing. We should be glad. But let me throw this in because I want you to know it's not too late to walk with God. Thank you, Jesus. It's not too late to walk with God. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. You know, and, and when you think about that, Mm, mm, mm. what it is to walk with God, what it is to be in his presence. Something just, I, I don't know about you, but it grabs me and it and it fills me and, and it just blesses me. Uh, thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Thank you, Jesus. That unspeakable gift is his son, Jesus, who, who sacrificed and made that, mm, mm, mm. he became a vicarious sufferer for you and for me. I'm here to tell you it's not too late. He made it possible for us to be, let's just say, reunited with the Father. Because Jesus is the door that leads to life. No one can come to the Father but by way of Jesus. And if you truly want to walk with God, what are you willing to sacrifice in order to get what you want? My God, my God. See, we have to be able to see this thing here now. I, I want you to know now, now uh, you know, we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So we're not going to always make the best of choices. We're not going to always do all of what we could be, should be doing. But I'm here to tell you today, God is calling for a sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not talking about a pigeon. I'm not talking about a lamb, a goat. I'm not talking about a puppy. Uh-uh. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you submitting to God. Uh, oh, I, I want to have a walk with Jesus. Uh, and I'm thanking God that it's not too late. Thank you, Jesus. What is God telling you to turn from? Oh, my God, my God. Who, what, where, what, what is God telling you to turn from? What is he trying to get you to let go of? You know, you, 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 you don't want to be like the monkey. You hear about, you hear that story about the monkey that, you know, he, he puts his hand in a jar because, he, and, and, and he feels that whatever it is he wants inside that jar, he sees it on the other side of that fence or whatever, and he puts his hand through the screen or whatever, and he, and he grabs hold to that something that, 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 that he just doesn't want to let go of and because he don't want to let go of it now he's able to get caught mm, mm, mm. because in his mind he's got to have it 
And saints, I'm here to tell you, God might be telling you to let go of that something, that one thing, that somebody, that something that, Lord Jesus, that is not pleasing to him. Let go, let go, let go, let go, give up. Oh, my God. And when I say let go, give it to him. Matter of fact, the Bible says, cast all of your cares upon the Lord because he cared for you. Saints, I, I got a word for you today now. I got a word for you today. And, and I really do believe that God want to meet us at our point of need. You know, the Bible talks about Enoch and the Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Thank God for Enoch. Matter of fact, he was translated. The Bible says he walked off the planet with God. God was so pleased with him. God said, come on, I don't even want you to stay here no more. Lord Jesus, can you imagine the relationship that these two, these two men have? Oh, or had, I should say, you know, and, and matter of fact, still having today because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I, I believe every word of scripture, but the Bible is also clear when it talks about Noah in his walk with God. Mm, mm -mm. Man, his walk with God. My God, my God. See, see Noah, 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 his name means rest. His name means comfort. His name also means to bring relief. Oh, thank you. Do anybody, do you know a Noah? Do you have a Noah in your life? Oh, someone you can go to to find rest? Is there, is there someone you can go to where you can find comfort? Is there someone you can go to that can bring relief? Well, I'm, a head, I'm here to tell you today, all you got to do is go to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Uh, oh, I'm talking about a 24-7, 365, 366 in the leap year. He's an on-time God, always ready, always willing to step in and to step up and to do what needs to be done in your life. My, when you take into consideration that God would use Noah to save his family, to save his family. See, God used Noah to save his family. And then, and then you also have to realize now, in, in the process of saving his family, he didn't just save his family, he saved the entire human race because he translated from that old dispensation into the new dispensation when God brought the flood. And, and, and I mean, that brother ministered for 120 years to a people that couldn't receive the word. He ministered. And for you ministers out there, I'm going to tell you now, it's going to get hard. I mean, sometimes, Lord, you, you be pouring out, you be trying to bring a word to a people that are struggling, a people that don't know this man named Jesus, and you're trying to bring a word that, and hoping that they would receive that word, and you say, Lord, how long? Get like that, Jeremiah. How long, God? How long? How long is it going to take for them to receive that word, that word of life? Ooh. Jesus, it might even take a lifetime. I'm here to tell you, just like that man that was hanging on the cross. I mean, the Bible doesn't say he ever went to church. The Bible doesn't say that he ever was baptized and was ever a part of a communion or anything like that or ever was in prayer. But that, that man said, Lord, remember me. He said, remember me. Why? Because he believed God. See, I'm here to tell you now. See, you have to believe in that name, which is above every name. Not just believe in the name. You have to believe in the man. Oh, my God. He suffered, bled, and died for you and for me. And I'm thanking God today for the new life that I have in him. You should be thanking God today for the life that you have in him. Because if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Oh, I'm thanking him today because I know, Lord God, where he brought me from. See, I can't tell your story. I can only tell mine. And I know my story wasn't always bright. My story wasn't always good. But I can tell you one thing. God has been faithful. Every, every word is true. Thank you, Jesus. See, when you think about Noah, Noah lived in a time when men were, were corrupted. They were universally corrupted and they were living in moral darkness and living in sin. I mean, you look at really what, where we're at today in the world today. So, so much so that God said, matter of fact, God said he was so upset and uptight with the world because he says, man, I, I can't believe I made this. What, what, what happened? And, and, and God said, well, well I'm going to destroy the human race. 
He said he was going to destroy all of mankind, the human race, because of the evil that was in them. And not, not, see, the evil that was in man. See, and when you even look at where we're at today as a people, you want to know why God sent you here now? Because of his goodness that is in you, that can change your community, that can change your family, that can change, oh, the lives of people. Because right now we're living in a dying world. We're living, oh my God, mm, we're living amongst a people that need to hear an on-time word from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And you're that instrument. You're that one. That can make a difference. Thank you, Jesus. Because I recognize and realize that if it had not been for the Lord, ooh, Jesus. I'm talking about that bright morning star. I'm talking about our soon coming king. I'm talking about the ancient of days. I'm talking about the one that stood out on nothing at the corner of no place and made the world twirl. I'm talking about the one that thought enough of you, Lord God, to, to bring you here at this time in your life. And you're wondering, what can you do when there's so many needs that need to be met? When God can use you to be a change maker, come forth as his ambassador to bring forth this gospel. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. All participants are muted. I'm thanking God. I'm thanking God. Because in spite of all of what we might see in the world today that is not right, we know one thing for sure. God is good. He's greater than good. He's good than good. See, and Noah believed God. And he was considered a righteous man. Why? Because he believed God. Because he demonstrated. What did he do? He demonstrated a strong faith in God. And he was considered blameless in his generation. How do God see you? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God, my God. How do God see you today? Man, see, you, 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 you don't, mm, man, oh, man, oh, man. See, you, you don't want to play church. This isn't the time to play church. Understand, first and foremost, I'm not talking about the building. You are the church. My God, you're walking, talking, singing, uh, witnessing. You are a testimony of God's goodness, his grace, and his mercy. And because of the positive attributes of Noah. See, Noah has some stuff, man, that was caked in, baked in. Are you hearing me? See, all of us got to enter into that furnace of affliction. My God, something about that fire that can burn off the doubt, that can burn off the fear, burn off the worry, burn off the double-mindedness. Uh-uh. I got to walk in the, in the assurance that all things are truly working together for the good. Why? Because God is great. God blessed him. God blessed Noah to receive his unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. What is his unmerited favor? His unmerited favor is his grace. Matter of fact, look, turn with me to Genesis 6 and 8. Genesis 6 and 8 says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. He was a just man. Do we have any just men on the line? Do we have any just men out there in YouTube? Do you have any just men in your church? Do you have any just men in your neighborhood? Now, let me not stop there now, because I want you to know now, God's not just talking to men. He's talking to you women also. Do we have any just women on the line? Any virtuous women? Thank you, Jesus. Do we have any virtuous women out there in YouTube land? See, understand God, mm, he's a deliverer. I'm talking about a, a deliverer. He will keep you. He's able to keep you from falling. He want to present you faultless. You know how he presents you faultless? When, 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 when God can see Jesus on the throne of your heart, see, you have to have Jesus on the throne of your heart. And you know something? You know how you make that happen? Let me tell you how you make that happen. It says right here in that ninth verse, and he was, it says, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. My God, my God. You want to see change? You got, to, you got to do what you can do to walk with God. I mean, we so in the habit of trying to hook up with Sister Butterbean, Slick Willie, and Crazy Eddie, and, 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 and so on and so forth. And we don't recognize and realize it's not about walking with people. It's not about walking with Sister Butterbean as much as it is about walking with God. 
I need to walk with God. Thank you, Jesus. I, I need to get with that somebody. Oh, my God, that can do anything but fail. I'm, I'm talking about our soon coming king. I, I'm talking about that God that knew you before the foundation of the world. I'm talking about the God that spoke life into you. I'm talking about the God that, mm, my God, my God, that forgave you in the midst of your mess, Lord Jesus. He didn't throw you away. My God, my God. And some of us, Ooh, Lord Jesus. Are you talking about a hard case? Mm, mm, mm. Some of us, man. <laughs> oh, others have given up on you. But I'm talking about a God that never gave up on you. See, because grace is God's unmerited favor. Matter of fact, God's favor, grace, is received by those who did not merit it. In other words, you don't even deserve it. Grace is poured out on God's people because it was merited by Christ. Are you hearing me? Why? Because of what Christ did going to the cross. Thank you, Jesus. He was obedient unto death. Did he die? Yes, he died on that cross. He died on that cross. And I'm here to tell you, you can be dead in your sins. Uh, but just like God raised him up, I'm here to tell you, he can raise you up. He can bless you one more day. One more day. That's it. Today is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible declares that we are saved by God's grace. Saints, we are saved by God's grace. Those who are in Christ are beneficiaries of God's grace, of his merits. Oh, my, of Christ's merit, I should say. Thank you, Jesus. See, Noah was a man who didn't just talk a good talk. Uh-uh. He didn't just talk a good talk. He walked his talk. See, he walked the talk. See, in other words, he, he, he wasn't like he was unlike many in the world and in the church today. We have a good talk, but our walk is weak. Thank you, Jesus. Our walk is weak. And my saints, you don't want to be like what I like to call a spaghetti leg Christian. A spaghetti leg Christian is somebody who's up and down, in and out. Somebody that's not anchored, are you hearing me? Somebody that is not fully committed and sold out. Uh, somebody that is leaning to their own understanding. You don't want to do that today. Uh-uh. Not living in this mm -mm, sin, sick, dying world. See, someone who have learned how to talk a good talk, but Lord knows their walk is shaky. Not That's not me. Not today. Uh-uh. Not today. Uh, once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. See, when, when, when I, when, what, what I mean by their walk is shaky is instead of being led by the Spirit, many in the body of Christ, I'm not just talking to the people or talking about the people in the world. Many in the body of Christ are still following after the dictates of the world. Still being led by their flesh. My God, my God. I think about Paul when he says, why am I doing, Romans 7, I believe it's Romans 7. He says, uh, why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? See, it's something about sin. It's something about our flesh that will draw us away from doing those things that God would have us to do. I'm here to tell you, you can have mastery over your flesh when you submit to God, resist the devil. That devil's got to flee. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about an on-time God that will never leave you. The Bible says he will not leave you nor forsake you. In other words, he's someone you can depend on. Why? Because my God, my God, he's alive and well today. And I'm here to tell you all power is in his hands. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to follow after the dictates of the world. You don't have to be led by your flesh. Oh, my God. See, because when you allow the world to override what God want to do, when you allow your flesh to, to disconnect you from, let's just say, from that from that relationship that you can have with God, whew, you will deprive yourself of the benefits of a close relationship, of having a close relationship, or should I say fellowship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. See, and, and I don't know about you, it's just something about walking with the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. See, see, God desires for his people to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed more than you want to be blessed. And his church, my God, my God. That's why we're not to forsake the assembly, the fellowship. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh, I realized we went through a pandemic and we wasn't able to go to church for a little while. 
couple of years, but I'm here to tell you. And some people are still hesitant, don't still don't want to go into the church because they don't want to, they don't want to catch this uh, uh this, this dreaded this dreaded virus, COVID-19. But I'm here to tell you, I, I know a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above my God, my God. And it's something about the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. That name which is above every name, mm. that name which is above cancer, above heartache, that name which is above, oh my God, uh, uh, COVID, that name which is above fear, that name which is above worry, that name, my God, my God, that's able to give you life. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Thank God. You got, you need to be, you ought to be thanking God for who's watching over you. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says the devil's going around like a roaring lion, seeing who he can destroy. But I'm here to tell you today, God stopped by your house. Uh, he stopped by your job. He stopped by your church. Uh, right now, he's with you. He walking, he talking with you. I'm here to tell you, God is good. He's forever faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Psalms 103 and 2 says, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of God's benefits who forgives all of your trans uh, iniquities, who heals all of your diseases. You, you, no, 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 no. I just got to, I, I just can't, I just can't let this fly. Because sometimes we read scripture and we read it, we don't really move, we don't really meditate on that word. The Bible says forgives all of your iniquities, not some of your iniquities. I'm talking about a God that will forgive you of all of your of your iniquities, all of your sin. Uh, I'm talking about a God who's faithful, not sometime, but all the time. The Bible says that, you know, by his stripes, you are healed. And scripture right here in that third verse says, who heals all of your diseases. Uh, and I'm sure some of you right now on the prayer line, uh, you're dealing with the sickness. You're dealing with something that is trying to break a good man, good woman down. Uh, but I'm here to tell you this morning, God's got you. My sister, my brother out there viewing this on YouTube, uh, I'm here to tell you, take it off. God's got you. Hold on to that God kind of faith and keep on pressing for the blessing and know that all things are truly working together for the good. Look what he says, who redeems your life from destruction. Lord Jesus, that devil thought he had you, but you got away. Thank you, Jesus. Not because of what you've done, but because of what Christ did going to the cross. You're able now to live out that life, I'm, I, the balance of your life, serving him, uh, living out the balance of your life, being a blessing, living out the balance of your life with a lively hope and expectation of greater things to come. And I'm not talking about getting to heaven now. I'm talking about right down here, greater things to come. Uh, don't lose hope, my God, my God. Uh, it's something about walking with that man named Jesus, uh, I think about those two men that was walking with Jesus down that Amanus Road. They thought he was dead. They thought he died on that cross. They didn't know that they were walking with Jesus because it just, it just didn't make sense. With the, they just couldn't extrapolate that in their mind that you mean, to, no, 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 no. But it's something about when they was walking with Jesus. Uh, and the Bible says when he talked with them, uh, the Bible says their hearts burned. Uh, it's something about in his presence, not just the fullness of joy. He wants your heart to burn. Uh, oh, my God, my God. Uh, burn off the doubt, the fear, the worry. Uh, he wants you to have that blessed assurance of knowing uh, that all things are working together for the good. I don't know where you're at this morning, but I'm here to tell you, you're about ready to step into a breakthrough you're about ready to to step oh my god past that threshold of of the of of, of what is possible now and i'm here to tell you what may seem impossible god can make all things good he can do it and do it in a way where it, the impossible will become possible why because my god is able to do anything but fail and if god be for you thank you jesus no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you, my God, my God, shall be condemned. Who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with his loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed 
like the eagles. In other words, God wants you to soar. He wants you to reign. He wants you to rule. Are you hearing me? And you can't do that apart from him. See, but with him, all things are possible. Because back in Noah's day, men were, I mean, like I said, they were, they were just morally corrupt. They were living so deep in sin, so messed up, toe up from the flow up, five cans short of a six pack. I'm here to tell you, man, talk about stupid. Lord Jesus. See, 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 but Noah, he received God's grace. Why? Because he was considered perfect in his generation. He was considered perfect in his generation. Now, I know, you know when the Bible talks about perfect, to me, it means mature. See, to me, Noah was a mature man of God. See, you want to be a mature man, mature woman of God. See, the things that I used to do, I don't do no more. The places where I used to go, I don't go there no more. Oh, my God. Are you hearing me? See, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Thank you, Jesus. Sir. And I'm thanking God for the prayer line. I'm thanking God for this community. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this YouTube community. I thank God for my prayer line. I think, oh, not mine, but his. This is God's prayer line. Just like the church is God's church. Jesus is the, he's the high priest. He, oh, Lord, are you hearing me? See, for something to be perfect means it's complete. It means it's without deflect or blemish, it, it, it might also be precisely accurate or exact. The word perfect can also be used as a verb meaning to make something perfect. Oh man, so this is why you have to also understand now to take it just a little bit deeper, the definition of being perfect is someone who is entirely without fault or defect or flawless, someone who is flawless. You want to know who that is? Jesus. Noah, uh-uh, mm -mm. because all men were born in sin and shaped by iniquity. Are you hearing me? There's not a man who walked the planet who's not had to deal with or entangle, get enmeshed in some sin. That's it, all of us. And we inherited sin because of Adam and Eve. It's not like you did, well, well, I can't say you, you didn't do because all of us have done some stuff that we wish we can take back. But thank God for Jesus. Why? Because he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And, and I would say that, 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 that Noah was a mature man. See, and, 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 and understand now, in, in, in being a mature man, he was righteous. And he wanted to what? He wanted to, to draw closer to God. He, he pursued an intimate relationship with God. Are you hearing me? That was birthed out of being obedient, being obedient, being faithful to the call that was on his life. Saints, you're going to have to be obedient, faithful to the call that is on your life. Thank God you don't have to build a boat from scratch. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, now, I know some of you trying to live 120 years, but I'm here to tell you now, whew, oh, God, is he's a keeper. And I'm thanking God for every day of my life. You should be thanking God for every day of your life, because when you look back over your life at where the Lord has brought you from, mm, mm, mm. Whew, there were times I wish I could find a boat to, to jump on, because Lord knows I was stinking in sin. I, I, there, there's times I wish I had a raft, or just give me something. Give me, give me a, 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 a. I believe, I believe the Bible says when Paul was going through that storm, Paul, you're rocketing, and that boat was being ripped up in the storm and torn to pieces. And the Bible says that Paul came ashore on bits and pieces. Uh, every now and then, all you, all it would take is you coming ashore on some bits and pieces. Oh, my God, my God. And when you can still be in your right mind, thank you, Jesus. Uh, because that storm I went through with that man, uh, that storm I went through with that woman, uh, that storm I'm going through on my job, that storm I'm going through in my neighborhood, that storm I'm dealing with because of government, that storm I'm dealing with because of mm, the sickness and the COVID and the this and the that. There's storms. Storms will come. 
but storms will go. Oh my God. See, you got to understand these things happen within seasons. Uh, and I'm thanking God for the season that I'm in. You ought to be thanking God for the season that you're in because in spite of what you might be going through, I'm here to remind you, my sister. I'm here to remind you, my brother. You are still here. Thank you, Jesus. What the devil meant for evil, God blessed you to still be here. See, 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 and, 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 and see, see, Noah, mm, 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 he was privileged to know God's plan. Because Noah walked with God, he was privileged to know God's plan to destroy the human race with, 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 with the flood, with the water. You see, look, matter of fact, look at Hebrews chapter 7. By faith, Noah, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Let me take that back. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Here's what it says. That's the faith chapter. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, was moved with godly fear as he prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. He was divinely warned. I'm here to tell you, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And I, I, see, see, and I want you to know now, God can still get a word to you. He can get a word to you to let you know what's going on, what's going to happen in your future. I'm here to tell you today, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. I'm here to tell you today, it has not yet appeared what you shall be. Why? Because all of us, my God, my God, are, are masterpieces in progress. Uh, and in spite of what you are going through, know that God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And God want to use you to the saving of your household, to the saving of the world, to the saving of your community, to the saving of that ministry, to the saving of that loved one. Lord Jesus, you you are that one that can make a difference. You are that one that can make a difference. See, see, we're not here to grieve the heart of God. Mm -mm. God sent Christ to the cross because he loved us and he still loves us. Are you hearing me? See, but 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 we're not here to grieve the heart of God. See, and, and, and I realize that. That but you know that Noah he pleased God and he was considered righteous. Why? Because of his obedience to God. Saints, God is calling us to be obedient. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. You want to be obedient today, and that's what this is about. See, 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 and how do you be obedient? According to Genesis 6 and 22, thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him to do. So he did. Are you hearing me? Whatever God is commanding you to do, do it. Do it while you still have life. Do it while you still have time. Because I'm here to tell you, man, I, you know, I can only speak about myself right now, but I, I, I look back over my life and I said, man, how did I get here? How, how did I get here? I, I look at these gray hairs coming in. I, I look at, I, I said, oh, I see the wrinkles. I, I see, I, I mean, that young face that I used to see in the mirror, I don't see that face no more. I, 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 I see someone who was aging. I see someone, where at the time, I mean, how did time bring me to this place in my life? But I can say, Lord, thank you, Jesus, because when I remember, oh, God, those struggles, when I remember those storms, when I remember those problems and those cares and those worries, oh, God, that was designed to beat a good man, good, beat a good woman down. But I'm still standing and I'm still, ooh, I'm still making a way out of no way. Thank you, Jesus, because if it had not been for the Lord, you see, and, and, and Noah, he had a, a tremendous assignment, tremendous assignment, because he was called to build an ark. Now, look, now, it wasn't raining. It didn't rain. It there was no rain. 
they, they, there was no there was no ocean or sea around them. They didn't they didn't have that kind of water around them that would you know support a boat and this and that. What was you know so 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 so. But understand now, and you know after he got all those animals on the boat and this and that, and he ministered for 120 years about this flood that was going to come, and the people couldn't receive it. Matter of fact, the Bible says they laughed at him. They laughed at him and saying sometimes folk gonna laugh at you. Folk, not, they're, they're not gonna understand why you love this man named Jesus. They're not gonna understand why you wanna go to church on Sunday. They don't, they're not gonna understand why you wanna invest in God. See, hey, look here. You got folk investing in the world, investing in themselves, in their flesh. I mean, look at what we spend in, in reference to how we clothe ourselves and the jewelry we want to hear, the, the hair and the nails and the this and the that and the shoes and the cars and, and the houses and the, all, of the, all of the things that we want to put in the house to make it look good and presentable and so on and so on. And ain't nothing wrong with that. But when is the last time you've really invested in God and invested in the kingdom? When the last time you invested in, in the life of someone outside or other than yourself? Let me put it like that. And that's what this is about. Because I recognize and realize that what God has blessed me with is for me to, to be able to share it with others, be able to, to, to give it to others, to let others know that there's a man, my God, sitting high, looking low, who love him real good. God loves you real good, my sister. He loves you real good, my brother. And God is no respecter of persons. He is no respecter of persons. And what he's done for one, he's willing to do for another. See, and, 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 and you, Lord, I just got so much. I have so much for you. But I'm going, I'm going to end it here. And I'm going to come back tomorrow. And I'm, I'm going to give you another taste of what the Lord has blessed me with. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, it, 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 it's nothing like being in his presence. Saints, you have been given an opportunity to walk with God. Today is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice. See, Noah worshiped God. He worshiped God. See, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And, and I'm here to tell you now, God is a covenant-keeping God. He's a promise-keeper. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think according to the power that would be in you. That power be in faith to believe that your God can do anything but fail. Can't lie, can't die. Water can't dry them and fire can't burn them up and time can't wear them out. See, but you have to understand all of the above, all of the aforementioned is happening to us. We're being worn out. Time is winding up and my God, my God. You have to do what you have to do while it's still light, while you still have the strength, while you're still able. My God. And sometimes God will allow things to happen that will take us out of our comfort zone. But understand God is preparing you for something bigger, something better. See, and, and so many of us, we're looking at, we're looking at life, you know, looking at ourselves in the past when God is calling us to a future that is greater, a future that is blessed, more blessed than where you were. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. And understand every day that you're walking, every day that you're allowed to, to wake up in the morning, know that every day you're coming just a little bit closer to this man named Jesus. You're going to get to meet him one day. I'm here to tell you now, he's coming for a prepared people to bring them to a prepared place. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you shall be also in my father's house. Mm, I just feel good today. Mm. See, there's something about that word of God that can well up in you, boy. Mm, mm, mm. That can turn you on. And in spite of what it might look like around you, on the inside, my God, my God. You can know the peace of God. It's like being in a hurricane. That hurricane, the storm all around you. But if you can make it into the eye of that hurricane, there's the peace there. There's a calm there. Thank you, Jesus. And right now, mm, mm, mm. no, Whew, it's not too late. My brother, my sister, it's not too late. What am I saying? Keep hope alive. 
know that all things are working together for the good for those of us who love God and trust God to do and to be everything he says he is. Dear God, dear Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you once again, Father God, for the leading of your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for just blessing us, Lord God, to be able to, to pass through another night and to come into another day clothed in our right mind. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for the activity of our limbs. Thanking you, Father God, for reminding us on this day that is not too late. It is not too late to walk with you. And Father God, we love you today and we're thankful today, Lord, because we recognize and realize there's no sunshine without Jesus.